here. The highly anticipated Sansamp XB driver has arrived. So we're going to do a pretty deep dive on this one. There's a lot packed into this one, and I want to make sure I cover all these different possibilities, ins and outs and controls. So what we're going to do is go through the controls first. We're going to cover the front panel, the ins and outs. Then to wrap things up, I'm actually going to walk through crafting a tone. I'm going to create a preset based on what I would want to get out of the unit and show you my thought process about the changes I make, what options I use, and how I get to my final tone. I'm also going to show you a couple of options about using things like the crossover and the compressor and things as tone crafting tools, not just mechanicals that are, you know, helping a little bit of clarity or things like that, but ways it can actually sculpt your sound that you may not see right up front. So it'll give you a really good idea hitting the ground right away if you grab one, how to get your head around it and how to really do a deep dive on it and get the sound you want right away without having to spend a ton of time and finding this stuff on your own. So let's get at it. So right up front, what we see is you have two completely separate channels, no shared EQ. That's the big deal for me. Uh, we have a clean channel and a drive channel, and they have the exact same EQ operations on both. Each one has one exception that we need to take a look at. So let's see what we got. We have a clean channel with bass, and that's centered at 80 hertz. The mids, this is fully sweepable parametric. It's not a click thing where you go through a couple of different options. You can fully sweep it. Starts at 100 hertz, ends at 2K. Now on the treble, you have 3.2. Now here's the one difference per channel. On the clean channel, you've got the compressor. As we'll check out in a minute, the compressor is, I feel, pretty transparent, but not just clinical or really solid state sounding. Uh, it does exactly what you want out of a good bass compressor without coloring the tone dramatically, and it can really focus the bass on this really well. So I found it really useful, especially when going to the crossover mode and splitting things out where the bass became much clearer and I needed to tighten it up. On the other channel, ironically, the drive channel has drive. Who would have thought, right? Set at zero, you've got just clarity and you're not going to be getting any kind of fuzz or distortion or anything like that. But as you go through this, you can get up to insanity level. Baby don't need no more gain than this gain got gain. So you can go from clear to a little bit of grit to a good bit of distortion to I want to upset everybody in 100 square miles. Then you have levels for each one, basically functioning as a blend. You want more of one channel, less of a, the other, and being able to have a pretty wide sweep in between them so you can add just a taste of one or really get both of them roaring. And then we have our master output, which is obviously the finished summed volume going out to your XLR or quarter inch or both. We'll get into that when we check out the ins and outs. Now, the last thing you'll notice under the controls here are the three switches. These are push button switches, and the first one is the bite. If you have the Steve Harris or the Getty Lee, you know kind of what this is about. It does pretty much what it says. It adds bite. It's kind of, uh, it's basically a presence switch. It adds in the characteristics you would get if you really dug in or really started getting that off the frets grind when you started playing harder, and it adds that upper brilliance and detail. We'll definitely be hearing that when I'm crafting in the tone, and you'll get to hear it on and off. Now, one of my favorite functions on here is actually the middle switch, and that's the pre-post. What this does is it takes the mids of the drive channel, and it puts it either before or after the amp emulation. The amp emulation is only on the drive circuit. So, if you put it in pre-mode, it sets it up more like the para-driver, if you're familiar with that one. If you put it in post, it's more like the bass driver. So having it pre or post that emulation makes a huge difference in whether it's being colored by this circuit or not. And for me, it really is a massive tone shaping tool that I think isn't really obvious right up front until you get your hands on it. But we're going to check that out too. And then last up is the crossover. You can kind of look at it like you start at the center like this and 
adding more high pass and low pass makes it move like this. So each channel, that's actually a bit more like that actually, but each channel starts shaving off this one's bottom and this one's top, creating more distance and less overlap between the signals. This allows you to also, because it's movable, create gaps in your EQ spectrum somewhere to notch out something or some a place that you just really don't like. Like I hate 300s in the low mids, so I can almost move it to focus it that this one gets rolled out before it and the other picks up to be able to dial out things really specifically so it becomes tone crafting, not just trying to create clarity. So having this be able to be adjustable for a two channel unit is just, I think what a lot of us have been waiting for to get that really well-crafted tone finally dialed in exactly as nerds like us want it. So on the ins and outs of the unit, we have a minus 10 dB pad for the input. So if you have a really hot input from your bass, that kind of thing, you can go ahead and adjust that there and dial it back a little bit. Input, self-explanatory. The tuner out, it's a unaffected output that you can use for a tuner or even a direct if you need to. Straight out, it's not affected by EQ or any of the other circuits. You also have an effects loop which this is really cool to have in here, uh, something where you can just, you know, put your other units in it and have it right inside the unit so that when you go to your final outputs, they're already in the chain rather than having to put your outs, you know, through the other pedals, that type of thing. Their location in the signal is all the way at the end. So post everything, there's your effects loop. So then we have the power out. This is 18 volts. So definitely if you're gonna be using a power brick or a board power supply, make sure you've got an 18 volt on there that matches this one's requirements or use your factory one here. Now there's a 10 dB boost switch next to the quarter inch output. So if you have requirements on either your amp or mixer or whatever that you need to really get that signal jumped up, that works. That's also applied to the tuner out. And then we also have a mic and line level switch that applies to our XLR and a ground lift. Another thing to note, you can use the quarter inch and the XLR outputs simultaneously so it's not a one cuts the other thing. Both of them work at the same time. Now finally, pretty self-explanatory, but we have the three stomp switches. We've got the on and bypass, which turns the whole unit on or off. The center button is clean or drive. If you're only one, running one channel and switching back and forth in between the two, Clean is here, drive is your red hot. Pretty intuitive there. And then the last one is the mix button. So if you're not gonna be using them independently or switching back and forth, and you have a tone that you've created using both channels, you're in with that one. All right, let's get to the tones, baby. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and craft a tone. Uh, I'm gonna go through each step and I'm gonna Try and come up with something that uses basically every option on here. So we can go through all of them and arrive at a finished tone. And you'll be able to see my thought process as I'm going through it. So let's start out with the clean channel. And I'm going to see just where everything set zero, my tone is going to be at. Okay, so let me switch to drive and see what I got going on there. So my first thought is what I'm gonna do is take the drive all the way down. And what I wanna do is get the right EQ balance first and then I'll see how driven I want this tone to be. Since I know we're gonna end up at a stacked tone and I'm gonna use the crossover, I'm gonna go ahead and engage that pretty early on. Now you may want to build a tone based off of another option that's here, which is not using the crossover and just using both EQs at the same time. So it's kind of a bi-amp rig, but one that isn't crossed over. Let's check these two channels out together and see what they sound like if both of them are put on, but no crossover. Notice my 
drive channel is actually down a little bit, so let's set that at zero. Without the mix, drive channel, and clean channel. So already we've made a difference here. All right, so my first thing is, is I wanna make something that increases the clarity of my initial tone, and then I'll add gain as I go. I'm gonna EQ the clean channel a little bit dark because I'm gonna want that to be the thicker bottom channel and kind of bring in some of the frequencies I would normally EQ, and then I'm gonna do the opposite with the drive channel. So let me bounce this into here. And for me, I'm gonna go after the mids first. The mids to me are the, always the most important in the bass. It determines where you sit and how things balance. So a place I always wind up boosting is right around 110 to 120. It's where I really like the gut punch of my sound to be, and it really brings thunder without bringing mud. So I'm gonna go on over to here. and I'm gonna dial this back all the way to 100 and then up just a little bit to nail about 110, 120. Then I'm gonna grab my mid here and I'm gonna give it a pretty good, pretty good punch there, so. So now I'm already starting to hear that throatiness and that kind of thump, and that's right about where I wanna hear it. On my mids at the top, I like a good snarl at about 1.5 2k that's where i get my grind from especially from a good metal tone so that's where i'm going to lean into it with the drive channel so let's check that out we'll go ahead and bring up the mids give it a quarter turn here and then i'm going to get my whoop, mid shift and bring that all the way up to 2k now let's hear the drive channel <laughs> So I feel like those are kind of dialed in where I want to hear them. I'm going to bring up the level already on the drive channel. So let's go ahead and get that mix going. Just a little bit of drive. And now let's hit that crossover. Hear how that just opened up all of a sudden the clarity and the just bigness of the overall tone just exploded. It went from, you know, black and white TV to HD. So already we're getting a lot out of this and we barely touched the available options. So let me hear where we're at EQ wise and see. In the, uh, the drive channel, Just that detail is amazing. Hearing that you get that, that clang out of it and a really solid bottom. I can tell already I'm going to tighten up the bottom a little bit and add some a bit more compression. I'm going to go pretty hard with it. There we go. Just solid like a sledgehammer. Next, let's go through and see what happens when we make some changes in the crossover and see if we like them or not. Now I'm going to cut off some of the high end of the bass channel or the bass channel, the clean channel, but I'm using it for a bass signal. So let's try that out. Interesting. So I'm cutting out a lot of the upper mids and things coming out of the clean channel. So you're getting a drive channel that's really doing the yeoman's work up in that direction. As opposed to setting them together. Now, I don't know how well this comes across on YouTube and that type of thing, but you can hear a bit more in the mids there, but it's kind of a stacked thing. It's a different color. So this is what I meant about tone shaping. Don't just look at the crossover as, oh, I'm trying to clear up the sound or something like that. Think about it as a place where you can add more emphasis in different sections 
by changing where your overlaps are or where you leave deficits. Really, really cool. It's like another EQ in that you can cause, you know, peaks in certain EQ frequencies or complete deficits, basically, you know, notching something out. So let's see what happens when we dial up, actually over here, on the drive channel. And we're probably going to have to bring this up a bit because I cut a lot of the signal out. The high pass is now pushing just the top end of the signal in there. Even it up, actually. So here now it's become a lot more stacked in the center mid area and you're getting a lot more honk out of it because I've rolled the amount of mids that are coming into the high end on the drive channel with the filter and now we're getting more resonance there. So if I want to dial out that nasal honk instead of necessarily attacking the EQ because I like where it is, we can go to right here. Yes, I'm working backwards and I'm watching a monitor in front of me. So let's roll that back up. To me, much nicer to the ears. So you hear that right away. I'm using this to EQ and dial something out I don't like, not just using it for separation. Let's try adding the bite and see what that does to the tone. That's got some, uh, some snap to it. So automatically, if I was going to use that, I'd start emphasizing a lot more bass and I'm probably also going to roll off some treble. Now for me, what I can tell right away is I'm probably for my taste going to want to bring back in some mids. I'm going to bring some bass it in on the clean channel, get that nice thump going. I'm also going to want to take the master down because I'm boosting a lot. So. Okay. Come on, man. <laughs> That's just so heavy. So by adding in the bite and then rolling in some more bass, this is giving me a much broader thing. The bite's giving me some more snap, the bass is giving me more thump. So I'm getting pretty happy with this. Got a good bit of clarity. I can hear a good bit of solid low end, but it's got uh, that kind of piano tone I'm really after. And then up on top, there's that detail. That's the beauty about a unit like this is because you've got those separate uh, EQs going on and such a broad range of things you can do. One EQ isn't affecting the other. They're both separate to each other. And then you got the crossover. So you get this massive layer of sound where going, you get this huge clang in this massive bottom or getting a nice low end and at the same time. That for me is what I've been after for years is being able to get the huge low end without sac sacrificing the top and mid detail. So now on top of that, let's go to the pre and post and listen to how this affects our mids from that drive channel. So from here we have switches in. It's a little softer. Uh, it's a little more rolled off on the high end to my ear. It sounds to me, yeah, like it's kind of 
just not quite as bitey. It's not quite as detailed. If I wanted a thicker, more rolling sound, I would probably keep that in. Or if I had dialed this tone in especially bright, I might want this to back it down a little bit. Now, let's pop that out. I like it there. I like a lot of upper bite. I'm usually trying to destroy the guitar player's will to live. So for me, the most detail possible is where I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that one uh, popped out in position. So I'm going to make a couple more small adjustments and pretty quickly, I think I've arrived at a tone that I would probably use a good bit. To give even a bit more thickness, I'm going to go ahead and roll up the volume of the clean channel just a bit. Get more of that bass in there. Yeah, that brings a good bit more thunder uh, and supports it a bit from underneath. See if I just shave off a tiny bit up here and see what happens. Now, let me set it back to 12 o'clock here. Yeah, I feel like I lost too many low mids in there and a little bit of grunt where I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that as is. So quickly, what did we wind up doing here? I added some bass to the clean channel, set the mids to get boosted at about 120 hertz, 110 hertz, somewhere in between. I got the filter on that one set at about 500 hertz, and I got the compressor moving pretty hard to keep that tight low end and... Uh, really bring it up from underneath. I get the level of it boosted pretty well. The drive channel is definitely boosted up in level. Treble is uh, straight up. Mids, I'm really focusing all the way up on 2K and using them to punch through and add some gain there to really add some bite, but also with the bite switch, I'm adding that to get that extra presence. Pre and post, I'm keeping in the up position so it's nice and bright and detailed and even more terrifying to the guitar player. And then I've got just a little bit of bass in there to kind of roll off any annoying top end frequencies, and just add a little bit in. But I've got the high pass set up. I'm gonna guess that's probably about 600 somewhere in there. So leaving just a bit, a bit of a gap from center. If you look at 500 as being center, just shaving out a little bit in that area to take away some of that honk we were hearing initially. Uh, there's actually not a lot of drive on this. The last thing I might do is bring that up and see what we get. That really brings it in. Uh, if I was going to do a tone like that, I'd probably roll back the treble and probably drop the bite switch as well. I'm not going to go quite that distortion. I'm shooting for aggression and clarity on this one. Not quite balls to the wall with it. But you can see, even with this in mix mode, so it's not the full channel, and the drives at not even 10 o'clock, basically, you're, uh, you're, you're blasting at the walls here. So, I mean, let's go full up and just see what happens. I mean, good Lord. <laughs> That's, that's intense. I, I, I think we're good with the drive. We're, we, we've got plenty of room. There's, there's tons of drive. So, probably around in here, just a little bit to give me some grit. But that's my thought process on going through and shaping a tone. And again, that's just one mode of operation on here. You might go to, you know, a regular biamp where you're not using the crossover. You just want a much more focused sound and two of them sandwiched together with no separation. Great sounds have been done like that. I mean, look at the his history of rock and metal bass. You know, there's there's been biamp rigs like that that have given us uh, classic albums. So that's also available in here. That's going to wrap up my thoughts on this one. Uh, I'm super impressed. When I saw it at NAMM this year, again, I was just, I almost committed a felony running out the door with this thing. So really happy to get it in my hands. Thank you as always to everyone at Tech 21 that got this out to me so I could get you some sounds on it early 
and make sure you buy one the day it hits. This is definitely the devastation station, but it's not just that. You've got great clean tones in it. You've got great distorted tones. You've got great combined ones. There's a lot under the hood here, and I think it serves a lot of players, not just people who might be looking for the Pinnock sound or something like that, that you might look at it at first glance and think that's who it's tailored to. So I'm definitely interested to see what you think and what kind of questions you might have. And of course you're going to grab one, but let me know that you are. I'll see you down in the comments and I appreciate you checking it out. I'll see you on the next one.